Welcome back, guys. Here we are at the headquarters of a made-up uh, facility. These are uh, paid actors by Iris. She's used her streaming money to pay these poor people to pretend that this organization is real. I still don't believe it, and I'm here to suss it out. Before we deal with that, I got a little Tamagotchi uh, action first, so hold on. I don't know what this does. It might do nothing, but I'm very curious. All the water in the pond. Poison, that's horrible. Water, pull at, drink it. Drink it. Go into a burning building to save a person's lifey. Okay, thank you. Thank you. When is it gonna grow up into an, into an adult? And then it's gonna, then it, I don't know, is it gonna die at some point? Am I gonna see the whole life cycle of, the, of this thing? That'd be horrifying. What should I call this? A, a pond, maybe? Well, it's sure not a river. We'll go with pond for now. I mean, is it a, what, like a waterfall? It's, okay, well, yeah, it's dropping down here. A waterfall. Why would they make something like this indoors? Because it looks cool. Who knows? There's a waterfall. It's a pond. Oh, God, I forgot. Since Sorry, it's been a couple days for me, so. There are lights hanging from the ceiling. There's a glass doll here. Office desk. Fancy chair. And that's the Nanyapal X, the symbol of knives. The what? Nanyapal means consisting of nine. Mm. You know how they're single, double, triple? Nanyapal is the knife. So Nanyapal X means nine X's? Same so. Did you know that knives at laws is derived from nine X at lozenge? <laughs> no, I did not know this. Lozenge referring to a diamond shape. In other words, Nizet Laws means the nine X's of the diamond. Great. It's the nice symbol. Apparently, it's called Nanyapol X. I hate this so much. There's that strange statue again, dude. It's the, it's the same one that was in the genetics facility. Wait a minute. It's, Toki, it's Tokiko's secretary, Mamoru. Mamoru? About nice. I was only hired recently. I don't know much about it, really. You're Tokiko's secretary? Yeah, but I'm also her bodyguard. I used to be a bodyguard for a certain politician until the end of last year. <laughs> yeah. He was a piece of human garbage. Wait, wait a minute. You're telling me you had no clue what was going on with that guy. You had no clue what... I don't remember his first name, but he was, uh, he was Mr. Sejima. Old man Sejima. Because he was Saito's dad. You had no clue what that shithead was doing? I refuse to believe that. There's no way. There's no way. I slugged him in the face and resigned. Oh! And ended up here thanks to an acquaintance introducing me. Yo, if you actually punched that man in the face, you're a, a real OG. Say something funny. Something funny. There, I said it. Thank you. Something funny. You're That's something oh. phony. No, I didn't think he was saying anything. Your badge. Uh. What is this? A vaudeville routine? That wasn't funny at all. Tokyo secretary. Um, what were you doing around 6 a.m. on the night? Judging by the way you asked that, I assume that's Jin's estimated time of death. Who knows? It could be a random time I decided. Well, yes. I was in Okinawa from the night of the 8th. I had a seminar to attend on the 9th and 10th. I returned to Tokyo late last night. I checked the logs for hotels and airports, for smartphone access points, and the security footage for each location. It's true that Tokiko was in Okinawa from the 8th to the 10th. I mean, that's a pretty damn rock-solid alibi. So she has an alibi. As long as you presume Jin's body wasn't brought back with her from Okinawa. Mmm, but like... Hold on. Yeah, okay, but like, how would they... Mm. That seems a, like, a, I don't know. It seems like a lot of work. It seems a little weird, too. Why wouldn't they just leave him in Okinawa? I, I had a very here. hard time finding the place. After all, Nyes is a secret organization hidden from the public. Even though you have an office building? What do you mean? That's a good thing Boss just happened to know someone who knew this location. Otherwise, we would have been out of luck. Even after I got inside the building, it wasn't easy. 
the guards, the security gates. If I hadn't met Mamoru at the entrance, I probably wouldn't even have made it to this office. I know about Abyss, and I know it's trustworthy. That's why I let you through to talk to the President. About Nyes. Anyway, I was surprised. I had heard of Nyes, the secret organization, but I thought it was just an urban legend. I can't believe it actually exists. Yes, there has been all sorts of gossip about us. <laughs> what is this? Hi, hi Baphomet. Uh, oh, d d just devil. Okay, excuse me. Some claim we're a secret society of Satanists, or that we have something to do with a sequence of binary code that came from space. But that's all nonsense. Made up stories that become more and more embellished as they were passed on. So then like, what do you do though? Rumors are quite a terrifying thing. I don't think you're, hear me out, I'm a, I'm a police officer. You're not allowed to be a secret organization without telling me what you do. Nyes is a perfectly legitimate ideological society. Mm. Our headquarters are located in New York, with many branches in cities throughout the world. This is one such branch. But what do you do? Nyes is an ideological society? This is a common misconception, but Nyes is not a religious organization. We are a group of like-minded individuals who act together based on a certain understanding of the universe. You're really making sure to dodge like what it is you believe or what it is you do. Normally, anytime someone new it shows up to your like, you know, it, right? Like people want to talk about their religion. They're like, hey, here's what I believe here. Here's why I believe it. You know, like th that's normally something people hold very near and dear. It's almost like you're, you, you don't want me to know what it is you do and what it is you believe, because it's really fucking sketchy. And that is? The simulation theory. Have you heard of it? That the world is an artificial simulation of reality created by someone or something. That's the theory. You're saying everything in this world we're living in isn't real? Yes. It's a false world constructed with specific rules by a program. And if it is made by a program, there must by necessity be imperfections, edges, or seams. To find these seams, or to create them, is our objective. I don't, I don't even know where to begin with this. Oh my lord, okay. Um, I, I follow, I follow where we're going with this. All right, I get it. I get your vibe. <laughs> I just... I just think you're fucking stupid. <laughs> Why would you do that? If you tear at the seams of a cloth, it will unravel and a hole will be created. Sorry about that. Someone just zooming by my house. I don't know if that, that picked up. I think it did. Thusly, we will tear at the seams of the program until it is unraveled and its people are emancipated. Ma'am, okay. All right. Look, I, I understand. Y y you, think, you think we're in the Matrix. And you're like, hey, if if we break the matrix, then all the people in their little pods, they'll be pulled out of the matrix and we'll be free. We'll be free from the shackles of this fake reality. But hear me out. What proof do you have that we are actually in like a matrix situation? That we are human beings, you know, with our minds blasted in this artificial world. What if you are correct and this is indeed an artificial world, but we're just code. We're just little bits of code running around in it. And you're like, it, it, hear me out. You ever, you ever, you know, like uninstalled something? Uh, it, it goes away. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> you know, you know, you don't really just take pieces out of it. Like you, I don't think this is gonna work quite how you think it is, ma'am. That is our ultimate goal. This old hack has completely lost it. I love an anime or any of these types of games when they call someone old because everyone in anime looks you either look like a 12 year old or like you, there's like three anime ages. There's child, adult and old person. And unless they specifically have the old person look, it's I feel like it's impossible to tell the difference between like a 25 year old and like a like a like a fucking 60 year old. I don't know. Anyway, how are you going to tear at the seams of the world? The intersection between the warp and weft. That's where the seam can hmm. occur. I don't understand. You will someday. It is a prophecy. 
It will be fulfilled eventually. That sounded like a fucking threat. <laughs> Stop flashing your gang that? signs, you god. It's a hand sign we use. It's meant to resemble the sign behind me. Can you, sh can you show me the hand sign again? The hand sign is supposed to be the symbol behind Tokiko. Can you show me the hand sign again? This hand sign is supposed to be that symbol behind Tokiko. W one more time, can you show me that hand sign again? I was hoping something, but like one more time. She kind of smirks a little when she does it. She's loving this. She's like, yo, I, I love doing this. This is great. All right, tell me about Bats 490. Considering the fact that you are here, I assume it would be pointless to hide it. Indeed, I had my subordinates create that video. Why? Bats 490 was an ARG, just a game. But there was a high level encryption hiding a message within. We have been seeking high IQ individuals with the capability to decode it. The purpose was to recruit them into Nyes. Okay. So this QR video was made for the same reason? I am aware of that video. I saw it on the news. However, it's completely unrelated to Nyes. That... I don't know, man. That's... Bro, the, the QR video and the Bats 490, they have like the exact same vibe. I don't know about that one there, kid. I assume someone made it with the intent to imitate Bats 490. I suppose that's possible, but seems very unlikely to me. What do you think, Tama? Hmm, hard to say on that alone. About Chikara. Do you mean the man from Horadori Institute of Genetics? So you do know him. I'm actually here because of a tip I got from him. Shikara is under arrest? No, he was just released earlier. We didn't have enough evidence to keep him detained. I see. Um, okay. Bro, <sighs> Ryuki, you just got absolutely shit on in this conversation. You were like, tell me about Shikara. And she was like, is he under arrest? No, we couldn't keep him. Okay. like. She just completely sidestepped anything you wanted to talk about him. Okay, here we go. No, we're diving in further. I seen it. Never mind, never mind. About your relationship with Chikara. Chikara is a former member of Nyes. What do you mean former? You're allowed to leave? This doesn't seem like an organization that you're allowed to leave. Though this was over 20 years 20 ago. 20 years? Oh my god. When he left us, he became an avid believer in the Order of Percent. <laughs> what are all these societies? Order of Percent? It's an organization that split off from Nyes. You could say they are a sect. The Order of Percent is a religious sect, whereas we are an ideological society. Mm. Despite our common roots, we are heading in completely different directions. Then how did Chikara know that Nyes created Bats 490? I wouldn't know about that. Perhaps he asked an acquaintance from Nyes. By the way, would you mind if I asked you a question? Excuse me, that's not how this works. What is it? Are you perhaps a Freyer? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, how'd you know? I, ha, how do you do, fellow Freyer? Freyer? Frey. Frey. I, I thought I heard that somewhere before. I am asking the person within you. Oh. What? I will ask you one more time. Are you a frayer? A frayer? Am I a frayer? Am I one who frays? Is this... Where have we heard this term before? Fuck! I'm trying to remember, dude. I feel so stupid because I feel like I should remember this because I know I've heard this before unless it was just something said in passing and I'm not supposed to understand the full context of it yet. Maybe it was something Ryuki was talking about in his Somnia. Fuck, dude. Does this matter? Does it matter what I say here? What if I look at her? Nothing. Okay. Um, I, okay. So my, my guess, I don't, I don't remember and I'm, I'm not going to sit here forever and try and try and figure it out. 
my guess what she means is because they're talking about how they want to to break down the simulation literally she uses the terminology to like fray away at it right so she's she's asking am i gonna be someone who's gonna bust down this video game they live in um the honest answer to that is probably no because i'm a i'm a boring basic bitch but the fun answer is yes you better believe we're going with yes. Hey, you, Yuki. As I thought. Then you've realized this world is fictional. Am I correct? Yes, I know. I, I, I do indeed know this is a video game. Yuki, what's gotten into you? Then please tell me the nil number. If you truly are a Freya, you should know it. Um... I, all right, well, hear me out. It's never failed me before. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh. Damn it. This one, not enough, not enough digits. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It's the easiest thing in the world. Nil can also mean zero. Fuck, I don't know it. So you don't know. In other words, you lied. I would never lie. I've never lied in my life. No good, she saw right through it. I thought that I could get her to keep talking if I fake my way through it. Y yeah. Way to go. What is a nil number? What is a frayer? Fray. Fray. Right. I remember now. It was written on that sign. Fray to free. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Fray can mean fight, but it can also mean to wear out or tear. Remember what Tokiko said. Their ultimate goal is to break down this world and emancipate its people. Yeah, okay, hold on. Yeah, wait a minute. This sign is literally like the Nye's sign. Straight up. That's exactly what... Yeah, wait a minute. Ms. Shigure, are you sure Nye's didn't make the QR video? We did not. But the word fray was written on that sign in the QR code. We of Nye's are only involved in Bats 490, which we created half a year ago. We are not the ones who created the QR video. The word fray being displayed on that sign must be a coincidence. Then tell me about what a frayer is. That can't be just a coincidence. Oh, but it can. After all, we are living in nothing but a simulation. Oh my god. A false world created by a program. And such programs always have some glitches lurking under the surface. We call such glitches seams. Coincidences like this are a manifestation of such glitches. Proof of imperfection. Proof of the scenes. The appearance of Jin's corpse is also likely to be an example of such phenomenon. What? Are you familiar with the Philadelphia experiment? Can't say I am. Please enlighten me. It's a top secret military experiment that's said to have taken place in the American city of Philadelphia on October 28th, 1943. A powerful electromagnetic wave was fired towards the USS Eldridge, a destroyer-class warship. Supposedly, the reason for doing this was to conceal the ship from showing up on radar. But as soon as the experiment began, something strange happened. The Eldridge was enshrouded in a greenish mist, then vanished. What? Afterward, it appeared at a military port in Norfolk nearly 200 miles away from the shipyard in Philadelphia. Sometime later, it reappeared in its original position again. So you're saying it teleported? Well, it's nothing but an urban legend. Just an occult story with low credibility. Yeah, this sounds like some real bullshit. I relayed Thomas' story directly to Tokiko. Yes, exactly. However, the story doesn't end there. When the USS Eldridge returned to Philadelphia, there were several sailors on board, but some of them had melted like a rotten banana, what? while others ended up with their bodies entirely burned and blackened. Others were said to have merged with the steel hull, their bodies having become a piece of the ship. Does that sound familiar? You mean Jin? Are you saying his right half teleported here? It isn't impossible. If a seam was torn, that is. This is such a... <laughs> I'm wasting my fucking time talking to this lady because literally everything in her mind is fake. 
So like, why would she give a shit about this entire world or anything that we do in it or any rules or like what the, you know, like why does she give a shit about Jin's murder? Because he's a, he could be a fake person. Like this is a waste of my fucking time. Impossible. Hold on, I had I had some wink sinks to do though. No, I couldn't wink sink. Oh my god. I didn't think that was going to just yeet me out of there. Well, I missed it. You like this park, don't you, Ryuki? I feel calm when I'm around nature. I so assumed th Okay, so wink sinking is missable. Understood. Got it. I, I definitely thought for sure that that was going to be required to like pass through that 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 scene, but apparently not. So good good to know going forward. It's like I can feel the buzz inside me quieting down. Tama, what do you think about what Tokiko said earlier? Is something like teleportation really possible? Uh, hey, come on! I told you the Philadelphia experiment is just an urban legend. And a stupid one at that. How else can you explain what happened with Jin? We can't deny that his right half suddenly appeared out of nowhere. <sighs> Jeez. Then why don't we find out for ourselves? What do you mean? You want to go to the studio right now? No need. Just close your eyes. My eyes? Just do it. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Wh what are we doing, Tama? Um... Oh! Oh! This is cool! Okay! You got a little recreation of it. What the? Did we teleport here? Are you serious? We're in Studio Devita, aren't we? It just seems that way. We're not actually there. Last night, I scanned every nook and cranny of the scene. What you're looking at now is what I replicated using that data. Wow. It's like I'm actually there. The corpse looks so real. Want me to put a mosaic over it? Uncensored is fine. Now, less digressing and more investigating. Your objective is to solve the mystery behind the sudden appearance of Jin's right half. All right, let's start looking around. Virtual reality activation. Oh, hold on, first my Tamagotchi. What ocean current do you like? You know, I'm a big fan of the uh, equatorial current. Sounds like a title of an Enka song -y. It's a song about a sailor and a harbor woman E. What's my what's my talking? So we're we're loving and crazy. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. So Okay, this is just like a Somnia. Hold. Oh wow. god. I can switch to X-ray mode too. That's because I've gathered all data from the scene. So I've got, okay, I've got normal and x-ray mode and hold, I can, I assume I'll get other modes as well at some point. Got it, all right, all right, cool. Let's start, I don't know, start with this camera. This camera. That body was shown to the entire world through this camera. Camera, okay, well, not a lot going on there. Another camera. There's an electric kettle here. Maybe it's for having tea during breaks. Would you really want to be drinking tea during breaks? That doesn't sound... I don't know, if I'm in like a... If I'm on a break in the middle of like a like a TV show or something, I feel like I'd want something cold, not something hot. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. Insulated tea kettle. Or electric kettle, whatever. Another camera. There's a big monitor here. Looks like it's there so the performers can check how they look on screen. <laughs> and another one. Monitor for checking yourself. It's a seat for the quiz show contestants. Uh, the seat, yeah, and uh, hey, guess what? It's another seat, woo! The Amabi, um, Amabi, Amabi? Amabi, Amabi TV logo has it on a huge the monitor. questions for the quiz also show up here too. <laughs> it's a podium used by the quiz show host. It's full, it's a, <laughs> the set is full of dazzling lights. Good God, I can't fucking read. Holy shit. These aren't shit. good for much other than for show. All right, well now to look at the important shit. I wonder how deep this sign is embedded. 
What do we do at times like these? Right, the x-ray. The bottom part of the signboard is stuck pretty deep in there. Bro, it's got an arrow. Oh, and there are like pegs inside him. What the hell are these? Hmm, there's a bit of a curve at the tip. Kind of like a man's, you know what? Shut up. Couldn't you have compared it to a fish hook or something? Well, it won't come out easily. Whoever stuck it in probably didn't want it pulled out. Of course not. A signboard would be useless unless it's standing. It's useless unless it's standing? Uh, let's not go there. No, that's not what I meant. Sign stabbing corpse. The signboard was stuck in the corpse, so it's difficult to remove. Okay. What's this? There's something inside the body. Hmm, three things catch my attention. First, a mixture of potassium chlorate, sulfur, and red phosphorus. What the fuck? This is probably a fire starter. It would ignite very easily. Ah, this is because his body caught on fire. That's right, he did spontaneously combust. Okay. The fuse is coiled up and extends from there. By the way, the fuse includes an oxidizing agent, so it can continue to burn even inside the body. And finally, at the end of the fuse is a powder mixture of iron oxide and aluminum. This is a substance that causes a thermite reaction. When ignited, it creates heat of over 3,000 degrees Celsius and burns violently. Situation of corpse internals. Inside the corpse is fuel that goes off even with the slightest impact. A fuse and a substance that causes a thermite reaction. Hmm. Like I mentioned yesterday, Jin's estimated time of death is 6 o'clock on February 9th. Based on the time his corpse appeared, it should be about 40 hours ago. Hmm. Rigor mortis seems to be fading already. It's not completely gone yet, but the body has somewhat softened at this point. It should take more time to get to the stage if it's been on a rooftop in the winter. That's why I think this corpse was kept indoors. Someplace warm. Rigor mortis was already fading and the body had somewhat softened by the time it was found. Okay. Is there anything else I can look at in x-ray mode? Oh, what is going on here? I can see the back of the set. There are a bunch of mannequins here. Pretty fucking weird. Why is there just a bunch of mannequins back there? There's so many of them. Okay, well. Doesn't look like I need to x-ray anything else. Let's give it another once over real quick. Yeah, just the sign, the corpse, and the mannequins. What's going on here? What are you doing? Why, why is there just like a... Oh, is that is that saying that this like connects to the lights, maybe? Hmm. I can't interact with it, so I guess it's not super important? Question mark? It's a signboard. Yeah. Signboard stuck in the corpse. Hmm. What's this? Getting a better look at it. It looks like something tied to his waist. It's like a spider's thread. Oh yeah! No. Oh! Even thinner. And I bet that's what's what uh tripped it. Um, tri tripped it, got a, uh, tripped him being caught on fire. My analysis concludes that this is a CNT, or carbon nanotube. Graphene sheets with a thickness of a single carbon atom. These were rolled into a cylindrical shape to make these nanotubes. The diameter is about 0.4 nanometers. A single nanometer is one billionth of one meter, so it's not visible to the naked eye. What? But I can see it. That's because this thread is made by bundling multiple CNTs. I've also enhanced your vision so you'd be able to see it. Sorry, there. Uh, it's uh, it's the day before a holiday. Happy Fourth of July, by the way, for those Americans out there. And um, apparently, some people in my part of America have decided that the the third of July is a good time to celebrate the Fourth of July. So I apologize for any any errant fireworks. By the way, CNTs are extremely durable. They're elastic and hard to break, and it's said that their theoretical maximum tensile strength is 50 times that of steel. Anyway, where is the other end of the CNT connected? I already found it, dude. I thought that was just like a designation of like, hey, this, this uh, turns the lights on and off. Like, <laughs> not at all. That way over by that red lamp. 
Now I can investigate you. What are you? What's this? It's the light switch. The CNT is tied to it. CNT extending from corpse. The CNT extending from the corpse was threaded through the ceiling beam and tied to the light switch. So that way when someone flipped it, it would trigger the reaction to start inside its body. Got it. Okay, it looks like we're pretty much done investigating here. Using the clues we've gathered so far, we should be able to solve the mystery. I I feel like it's kind of hard to say his body teleported here when there's like this weird wire setup going on. You know, this feels like the reason why they cut the light so they could get this, this, uh, this, whatever. I'm just going to call it a wire um, to get that set up, right? You mean the mystery of how Jin's body appeared? That's what you're talking about, right? Yep. Let's get on that now. First thing, about that power outage when the body appeared. Was it really just a power outage? I was wondering about that too. The lights came back on way too quickly. Plus, if the power did go out, the stream should have cut out at the same time. But the stream went on no problem. It's almost like someone just cut the lights. So it wasn't an outage. The lights were switched off. So how did the lights get turned off? That was a loud one, I apologize. Well, I think I know what did it. Um, I bet the, the, this what this is what did it. That's the switch that powers the lighting. Yeah, let's not overthink this. Someone simply walked up and flipped this switch. But no one was near the switch when the lights went out. Let's try to think of something else. What do you... Are we sure no one was near the switch? Oh yeah, I guess we could look around. We saw that no one was near it. Oh, I can go back here. Interesting. There were bundled CNTs tied to the body. <laughs> look, I'm trying here. I'm trying my best. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to mute my mic when I'm not talking. <laughs> they were routed through the ceiling beams and onto the light switch. But a dead body can't pull strings. No, but it can fall. From the ceiling, I mean. Now that you mention it, I thought I heard something hit the floor right after the lights went out. Okay, yeah, yeah, this checks out. So his body was hanging up here. It had the thread tied to the lights. Well, but... Mm, wouldn't we have seen the body fall and hit the ground and then the lights gone off? Right? Like, presumably, it would have taken until the body was low for it to pull the light switch. Also... This is gonna be this is gonna be a ridiculous uh, argument or complaint or whatever here, but think about this, right? So, the if if the if the if we're saying the body falling turned off the light switch because of this this wire connection here, right? Body falls down. Okay, so it's gonna it's it's going down, so it's pulling the wire this way, right? Which means on this side the wire is getting pulled in this direction. Okay, so. For for this to work by via physics, the light switch is going to get pulled up. You feel me? Because it's getting pulled in the direction. The vector of force is going towards the ceiling, right? Which would reason that in order to turn the lights on, you have to flip the light switch in the studio up to turn the lights off. Which, that just doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. You flip switches down to turn lights off. You don't flip it up. You flip it up to turn them on. Like, what is this backwards bullshit? The body fell from the ceiling and tugged on the CNT, which caused the light switch to turn off. So on to the next question. The corpse was hidden up in the ceiling, right? Then how did it fall? I don't know, someone pushed it? Um... The culprit dropped it from above? The culprit must have been hiding up in the ceiling. And when the time was right, they dropped the corpse. A simple answer, but... No. I've already confirmed that no one was up there. Hmm. Can you think of some other way? Um, ooh, the rigor mortis softened. The culprit used the mechanism of the body softening after rigor mortis. It's a ridicu ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous theory, but it's a cool idea. The body must have been placed up in the ceiling like a bridge between two beams. It would stay up there while the body is still stiff. But as time passes and rigor mortis lessens, 
corpse softens. And that's what made it fall down. Now for the final question. Why did the body explode and burn? Well, that can be explained by using the x-ray mode. Inside the corpse is fuel that goes because off the- Because of the yeah. contraption set up inside the body. The ignition agent combusted from the impact of the body hitting the ground. The fire went up the coiled fuse and onto the substance that triggered a thermite reaction. The substance was eventually ignited, causing a huge explosion. So that interval between the fall and explosion was because of the time it took for the fire to reach the end of the fuse. I get it. It was hard to find traces of that trick because it was such an analog method. All right, I think we're starting to figure things out here. So you can turn off this VR space now. Wait, but I'm only 75% reenacted. No, not yet. That was just a rehearsal. We still have the main show. What? What do you mean? We're recreating the culprit's actions. Are you telling me to do that? You're the only actor here, aren't you? Actor? You're getting way too into this. Wait a minute. So, I'm Tama, the director and camera operator. Now that I'm in the director's chair, I'm not going to tolerate shoddy acting. So keep that in mind. Are we recording something? Of course we are. We're testing a theory here, <laughs> so we need to create something that can be viewed objectively. Yo, my name's Ryuki on in this episode of Mythbusters. We're here to see that if you place a corpse on top, a half of a corpse on a ceiling beam, will the rigor mortis trick and allow it to fall perfectly cut side down without, you know, any jostling with a sign attached at the perfect amount of time. Like, how are you gonna figure this? <laughs> I have no idea what you're going on about. Check your stupid mouth, you third-rate bit part actor. Jesus. Are you too much of a moron to figure this out without the director having to tell you everything? But. Just zip it and play the culprit. If we're doing this, we're going for the Macademy Award. Macademy? Like, the nuts? <laughs> Enough! Let's get this started! Ready? What? Action! Um... Hi! I'm, uh, the culprit who killed Jin. Yep, true. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, prepare to witness an amazing show featuring this corpse! <sighs> <laughs> Not only is your acting amateurish, but I don't even understand what kind of character you're trying to play here. How can you not understand this, Tama? He's clearly playing the villain. It's so obvious, he literally said it. He said, I'm the villain who killed Jin. Like, <laughs> duh. I am an amateur. Well, this is just the beginning, so I'll give you a pass for now. Let's start with the positioning of the body. Where and how was it placed? Well... Oh, up there. It was right here. The body was placed so it was hung like a bridge between two beams. You can place it like this because it was stiff from rigor mortis. So that's how they did the light trick. Carbon nanotubes, CNT, were tied to the body. The CNT went up the beams and extended downward onto the light switch. But you see what I mean? Why is off? the up position and on the down position. That's freaking me out. Literally the only reason this light switch is backwards is for this like contraption to work properly. <laughs> they were just like, ah, fuck it. We'll flip it backwards. I refuse to believe that anywhere they have switches that you flip them up to turn them off. That makes no sense to me. CNT is too thin to be seen with the naked eye. So no one noticed it. I've got it all set up. Now I just need to wait for the rigor mortis to subside. God forbid someone walk by it, by the way, and accidentally get caught on this damn thing and like pull the body down early. That would have been hilarious. Hey, aren't you supposed to be in character? Boy, I sure hope the corpse gets softer soon. What's he doing? He's wiggling, dude. It needs to be soft and squishy, like an octopus. This scene makes no sense. I'm cutting it out. You made me do it. And after time passed, rigor mortis began to subside. I 
I guess the he body could... falls and the impact sets off the ignition agent inside it. I guess yeah, you could just say that like the tube the, the tube was set so that, you know, the lights flicked when it wasn't at the all the way to the ground. But how strong would be this carbon nanotube and like how cause it has to go all the way to the ground eventually, right? I don't know. Look, stop asking too many questions. The fire travels up the fuse line. Soon after, a staff member turns on the lights. Bam! A body appears, as if it teleported in out of nowhere. Sometime later, the burning fuse inside the body reaches the explosives. Kaboom! Yo, I timed that pretty damn well. I was just guessing, honestly. And that is the truth behind the corpse's sudden appearance and explosion! Cut! Good work. I got some nice footage of the reenactment. I still don't understand why the acting was necessary. Well, we got to show this to boss. Obviously, we're making we're making a movie out of out of this and the new Cyclops serial killings cases. It all makes sense now. That corpse didn't teleport here after all. Of course it didn't. Though the culprit obviously wanted it to seem that way. Half of a body just suddenly appearing out of nowhere. Just like the Philadelphia experiment. Someone went through all that trouble to make it look like something strange occurred. I think they also wanted to draw as much attention as possible to that sign. All so they could spread that QR video. Oh god, okay, to fit the text on the screen. I was like, what are we? We're just going, Yerom. Um... About the reason the corpse's cross-section was facing downward. That body fell from the studio ceiling. If it fell sideways when it landed, the culprit's plans would have been ruined. Yes, like you said, it would have been pointless unless the sign was standing erect. Just like a man's you-know-what. Again with that joke? Besides, it is not useless when it's not erect. W what Exactly. What? There was another purpose to the sign. It's the same reason darts and rockets have tails. I get it. The cut surface mm. would naturally face the ground because of that sign. It was meant to control the body's posture as it fell. Okay, um... Why did the culprit blow up the corpse? Their goal was to make it seem like a supernatural phenomenon. That's why they couldn't leave the CNT on the scene. Because it would give away the trick? Right. So that's why they caused a thermite reaction and destroyed the CNT. CNT is highly flammable carbon material. It doesn't stand a chance against 3000 degree temperature, but it bonds with oxygen to create carbon dioxide, which helps extinguish the flame. Wait, wait, what? Hold on. I didn't. I read that, but I didn't comprehend it. CNT is very flammable carbon material. It doesn't stand a chance against 3000 degree temperature, but it bonds with oxygen to create carbon dioxide, which helps extinguish the flame. Okay. About the, about the time rigor mortis would subside. The culprit must have wanted the body to fall during the live stream, right? It would have been pointless otherwise. But could they really predict when rigor mortis would dissipate so accurately? Yeah, like that seems wild to me. The culprit didn't put the corpse up on the ceiling beams while it was completely stiff. It had to have been after the body had started to soften, just slightly. That way, they could estimate that the body would fall in a few hours or so. The stream was scheduled for a whole six hours. And I guess it doesn't, I guess their goal wasn't necessarily that specific moment. They just wanted it to fall during the stream. Yeah, okay, and it was a very long stream. Okay, for some reason I was thinking that it had to be that exact moment when it fell, but that's not necessarily true. It could have been like a couple hours later or earlier or whenever, right? Just sometime during that stream they wanted it to happen. That makes a lot more sense. The culprit was fine as long as the body fell sometime during that period. Oh, okay, that's that's it. Um, so, to wrap it all up, the culprit's motive was to make this seem like a supernatural phenomenon and to spread the QR video, right? I don't know if that's all there is to it, but probably. I wonder why Jin was chosen. Who knows? Where could his left side be? Well, uh, we found it, but it's uh, a little bit later. <laughs> it hasn't been found yet. Anyway, starting our search with the people who might have the intel we need is the number one rule of investigation, right? Like who? 
Jin's right half was up in the studio ceiling the whole time we were shooting the show. There must be someone who knew about it, or at least noticed it. You mean... The director! Chinpei Wagai! Right. Where is he now? I've tracked him down using his smartphone GPS. He's in Akihabara right now. Oh, God. At the Maid Cafe Sunfish Pocket. Yep. Well, away we go. Haven't been here in a hot minute. Wonder if it looks the same. Like, how long after the new Cyclops serial killings is this exactly? Oh, there he is back there. There he is. A whole lot of, whole lot of single men in this room, huh? Weird. Ah, oh, shit. What? What do you mean? Oh! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh! Slow mo. Bro, what are these pictures? What the fuck, Chinpei? Um, my guy? This is insanity? You just started shooting on sight. Also, I'm dodging the bullets. I re there's no way. This is ridiculous. What? What does this answer? I forgot this game. This series likes the last game. Also, like these really weird controls as well. What? Why? Firing your gun in here? Are you insane? There are customers and staff in here. My bad. What do you mean you're bad? What the <laughs> An apology is not gonna cut it. That doesn't even account for the fact that you tried to fucking shoot me, my guy. Several people have called the authorities. The local police should be here soon. Hey, can't you just let me go? No, you tried to kill me. Are you dumb as hell? Even if I wasn't a cop, I wouldn't let you go. Absolutely not. <laughs> What? I told you, my girl's pregnant, right? This sounds like a you problem now, my dude. Don't get, don't care, didn't ask. I can't go to jail. You shouldn't have shot at me then. That's why I accepted his offer in the first place. I needed money to take care of my kid. Accepted whose offer? Some guy named Terror. Oh my God. I don't know his real name. Haven't seen his face or heard his voice either. All my contact with him was through Nile. What did he ask you to do? He said... I want, to, I want to borrow your studio for an hour or so on the 10th before you start preparing for the stream. Do not let anyone near the studio during this time. That includes you. All you need to do is keep the entrance unlocked. That's all. I'll pay you five million. If everything goes well, I'll pay you on the night of the 11th. Wow. So me and the staff haven't met this terror guy at all. I don't know what happened in the studio either. I had no idea that was gonna happen. Come to class 3A at Sekiba High. You'll get your money there. Class 3A at Sekiba High. Well, yeah, let's go pick up his money. And also, we get the money. <laughs> Ryuki. Yeah, let's go. But should we leave someone with this dude here to arrest him? I also, how did he know I had the case figured out? Like, when we already talked to him and we came to talk to him again. And he was like, ah, shit, they got me. He just pulls out his gun and starts shooting. Like, what the fuck was that? Oh no! Chikara! The director of Horidori Institute of Genetics. Chikara Horidori. No way. It can't be. Nothing to be done. Ryuki Chapter 2. We're spending a lot of time with Ryuki here. Oh, yo, Ikume Shrine. I love Ikume Shrine.
Mr. Date told me about this shrine. This place is so full of nature. Just like Yoyagi Park. It's just... calming here. I see. Tama, would you mind giving me some support? What do you mean? I've been thinking about Chikara's murder. Are you sure you're okay, Ryuki? What do you mean? I feel like all of this has been taking a huge mental toll on you. Yeah, I can imagine it would. I'm fine. More importantly, can you recreate the crime scene for me? I just need to close my eyes, right? Yeah, but... <sighs> fine. I'll play along. You are technically my master. I can't disobey your orders. Thanks. Uh, let's start then. Going right into another VR world. Okay, okay. Damn, she scanned that whole room fast. Unless, well, I mean, we, we could have stayed here for a bit. That's also possible. Yo, how's he just it's hung perfect. there? It's just like the real thing. I learned how to do 3D modeling in a correspondence course. Back when I was a student, my grandma told me I should learn a skill set. Your grandma? <laughs> um, sorry, what? Your grandmother? There are lockers lined up here, nothing suspicious. Students' desks, nothing that might lead to a clue. Oh, Ryuki, can you not rub your face on it? I'm not. The student's chair, nothing really of note. It's a blackboard. There's nothing particularly suspicious about it. The windows are also not suspicious. It's almost like the one suspicious thing. What could be the suspic suspicious thing in here, gang? I don't know. It could be anything. Hmm. You have to help me. Is it the TV? No, fall on. Is it the door? Oh, it's the corpse hanging there. <laughs> monitor use for class. Wait, monitor? I guess you could call, oh my God, my sensitivity is out of whack. I guess you could call that a monitor. Door to the classroom. Yeah, I mean, teacher's desk, nothing suspicious about it. Yeah, okay. Jakar's right side. The cross section is stuck right onto the blackboard. What's the estimated time of death? Based on the time the body was discovered, that would make it about four hours ago. Holy shit, that was quick. So, around 8 p.m. on February 11th, right around the time we were meeting with Tokiko. Chikara's right side. The cut part is right up against the blackboard. Let's figure out how it's there. I'm sorry, Ryuki. This might freak you out, but there's something I have to tell you. Will you hear me out? What? The thing is, this corpse is so cowardly that... It has no guts! <sighs> okay, all right, all right, okay. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tama. Thank you, I, I appreciate Good, Good bit, good bit. You got me. What? <laughs> I know, I know. That was so bad, the joke was over before I even said it. <laughs> but I just had to do it. I mean, look, the corpse is completely missing its guts. I couldn't let this chance pass me by. What a fucking loser. <laughs> oh, God. The reason the corpse is on the blackboard Looks is- like there aren't oh. any other clues here. Hey, you can't, you can't give me trivia while also having dialogue. Hold on. The reason the corpse is on the blackboard is because it doesn't have internal organs anymore. The open space inside the body has a lower pressure than the outside. It's similar to how suction cups work. He suction cupped on there? There's no, that is so ridiculous. What the fuck? He's just, he's just right onto there, huh? I hate that. That's horrible. Well, satisfied? Hmm. Hmm. Thomas standing there, or so it seems. What about the security cams in Sekibahai? I checked the footage, but I didn't see anyone suspicious. Oh yeah, that's right. We did have, uh, what was his name? Uh, was it Gen? Was that, it began with a G. But he was like, yo, there's a bunch of, you can just like walk in here and the cams won't notice you. Of course, that place is huge. So there are plenty of areas the security cameras don't cover. Any cameras on campus? None. Do you remember what Gen said? Gen, that is right. Security at High is completely lacking. 
Oh, oh, uh, whoops. How about the Nile message terror said Chinpei? I think he was lying about the money. Uh, really? Terror probably wanted someone to find Chikara's body. You mean he wanted Chinpei to find it? Not necessarily. It might have been for the police. Terror might have predicted that someone from the police would contact Chinpei. Is Terror the culprit? That's my assumption. I can't think of any other suspects. Just who is this Terror? I wouldn't be having so much trouble if I knew that. It can't be Tokiko, can it? Tokiko was with me at Chikara's time of death, and she was in Okinawa during the incident with Jin. I mean, hear me out though. Is she the direct culprit? No. Is it possible that she is orchestrating these events? Absolutely. Do I have any grounds to think she's orchestrating these events? None whatsoever. She's just a crazy lady in a crazy cult. Okay, like... Yeah, at the very least, it seems unlikely that she did it personally. But something has been bothering me. I feel like Tokiko is involved somehow. Chikara was a member of Nice, and he knew about Bats 490. That's not all. The appearance of Jin's corpse was made to seem like a paranormal phenomenon, as if the same thing from the Philadelphia experiment had happened. After all, we are living in nothing but a simulation. A false world created by a program. Could she have done all this to give her claim credibility? That seems a little weird. I don't know, but it's possible. Seems like a very poor case, motive. Let's go see Tokiko. I have to talk to her. Understood. We've come this far. I'll back you up until you're satisfied. All right, well, we're back. Hey, it's me. Uh, so like Chikara ended up dead after I asked you about him. Just saying, that's a weird little quinky dink, isn't it? I've been expecting you. I thought you would be arriving soon. What do you mean? I mean, I knew you would come see me. Stop this. Oh my god. Do you greet everyone this way? Hey, honey, I'm glad to see you for Christmas dinner. Oh, thanks, you know, I, I'm so glad to see you, Ma and Pa. Hold on, I gotta flash my gang sign. They're like, oh, you little rascal, you. You can't stop doing that. Can't, like, what the fuck? Okay, look at everything again. Strange statue. Glass doll, the desk, fancy chair. The symbol of knives, the Nanyapal X. There are four unseen X's hidden within. Shut up! They represent the truth of the world you live in. That is yet another meaning inside the Nanyapal X. Four unseen X's. Some lights, we got the pond and the waterfall. Just blasting through this real quick. We were literally just here. It's Mamoru, Tokiko's secretary and bodyguard. Yo, anything suspicious about Tokiko? I'm just gonna ask like she's not here. Not really. She's a kind woman. Uh-huh, sure. But I obviously wouldn't tell you even if I did know something. You know what? Okay, at least he's honest about it. As her secretary, it's part of my job to protect her secrets. Mamoru is an excellent employee who faithfully fulfills his duties. I have complete trust in him. I'm honored to hear that. I respect you from the bottom of my heart as well. Gag. That is pretty fucking yikes. <laughs> that is so saccharine. Oh my lord. About this room. As you know, this is the president's office at the Nye's Japan branch. The world is full of rubbish. Such things should all be washed away. That was my <laughs> thinking when I designed this room. I hate you so much. <laughs> oh my God, so dumb. You designed it. This is some dumb bullshit someone with way too much money would do though, right? Like a, like a person who's, who's absolutely lost their touch with reality and they just have like money to blow yeah they would do something like this this world is fake and we gotta gotta wash it all away yeah checks out yes the flow of water cleanses one's heart. shut up oh my god just like the flow of time why the sunglasses these aren't sunglasses it's a fairy's black bra uh oh what a degenerate it's true <laughs> Okay, um, an absolute perver wearing a black bra on his face. Tokiko Shigure, president of Nice Japan. 
Uh, Jin's right half didn't teleport. I've solved the mystery, Miss Shigure. Jin's right half didn't teleport. It was just made to seem that way. It should have been obvious when you think about it. Teleportation? It's impossible. We live in a simulation? This is a fake world created by a program? Yeah, call her out on her bullshit. Impossible. And then flash the gang sign back at her. <laughs> simulation theory is nothing but occult nonsense. Just a ludicrous myth like UFOs, ghosts, and Kappa. I'm sure there are people who'd like to believe in these things. Now hold on, like I wanna say, I just wanna say like ghosts and Kappa, yeah, okay. UFOs though, I don't know about like, hey, aliens and shit, but like, UFOs are very real. <laughs> those are very real. It just stands for unidentified flying object. There's been a lot of those. That's a very real classification of things. And there are things that some governments don't know what they were. I'm not saying that's anything paranormal. It just means that we don't know what the fuck it was. All right, but I wanna, I just wanna make that distinction very clear and obvious. No, I don't. I don't believe that there are, you know, green Martians flying around in flying saucers coming to the planet. But UFO is a real, it's a real designation for a real thing. And there are groups who profit by making people believe. Mr. Ryuki, it appears as though there's been some misunderstanding. We of Nyes have nothing to do with this. Are you sure about that? All the pieces would fit together if Nyes is the one that made the QR video. The falsified paranormal phenomenon. What was written on the signboard. It all advances your agenda. Could it be that you wanted to spread the QR video by showing that sign along with the corpse on stream? As I've told you, we are not the ones who made the QR video. What is the purpose of the QR video in the first place? Are you saying there is some message urging people to join Nyes in it? Perhaps there is. I don't know. We could find out. You know someone named Chinpei Wagai? No, I don't. Then do you know about Terror? I've heard that name on the news, yes. This is about the culprit, is it not? Yes, but... Wait, how do people already know the name of the, the name of him? Wait a minute. I have absolutely no idea who it could be. I'm sorry I can't help you, but... About Chikara's murder. I know of the incident, of course. However... Yes, I know you have an alibi. We were here having a conversation during the time of Chikara Horidori's death. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're completely innocent. You are the president of Nyes. Surely you have plenty of subordinates who can do your bidding. Are you implying I ordered someone to kill him? Uh, no, but actually yes. It's a possibility. And what would be my motive? Um, well... Remember what Tokiko said. Chikara Horidori is an avid believer in the Order of Percent. Their order and Nyes are heading in completely different directions. Perhaps Nyes and the Order of Percent are hostile. I see. You're suggesting there was a conflict between organizations. It's a possibility. It seems kind of unlikely, though. It is true that Nyes and the Order of Percent have differing beliefs. However, we are not at odds with one another. Both organizations believe in the simulation theory. In that respect, we are comrades. What do Nyes and the Order of Percent believe in? We are living in a simulation, a false world. And from this false world, we seek emancipation. That is what Nyes believes. On the other hand, the Order of Percent, we are living in a simulation, a false world. But they wish to remain imprisoned within it forever. Forever? Mr. Ryuki. Have you ever played an open world game where you play as a criminal? <laughs> I don't at all. Mr. Ryuki, have you ever participated in GTA 5 RP? A game that lets you rob, murder, blow things up, leave a trail of debris wherever you go. An absurd, heinous game where you can freely commit all sorts of horrible crimes. I've never played anything like that, but I know what you mean. Wow, Ryuki's not a gamer? That's pretty yikes. Then you can understand. If this is a false world created by someone, then the Order of Percent believe they can do whatever they wish. To them, this place is a true utopia. A dream world where they're allowed to do anything they want with no real consequences. What? That's such a ridiculous line of thinking to me. Because, okay, like, if, if we believe that, wh where, what is the line here? All right, is is the thought process that 
oh, there's only one individual person like are other people people or are they trapped in this dream fake you know program world or are they just part of the simulation where's that line because that really really determines how i feel about this because if you believe that we you know you myself and every other human being on the planet and every creature fuck it we'll just say that like every living thing we're trapped in this computer program you know let's just say humans to make things simpler right let's just say humans us humans were trapped in this world this computer simulation and the order of the percent says hey we're in a simulation i can do whatever i want include including kill people because it doesn't matter we're in a simulation no yeah, that's still a person you're killing. You could, that thought process, you could just take to the real world. Cause like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, if I if I pull out a gun, if I'm Chinpei Wagai and I pull out a gun in the middle of Sunfish Pocket and I just start blasting at Ryuki, my thought process being, ah, if I kill him, it doesn't matter. This is a simulation. He's still dead. <laughs> like that guy still dies. I don't it's such a stupid idea. And if you believe that other people aren't real, then why the fuck do you care about leaving the simulation? <laughs> like, if nothing is real, then what, what does it matter? I agree with the order of the percent then. If, I, if you believe that everything is a false construct and you have proof to back it up or whatever, and that no other human being is real, they're all just simulations, then fuck it, right? Like, whatever, you know? I can understand that mentality. But if you're trying to free everyone else from this, then you're you're mentally you are accepting that they are people. But then if you go committing crimes against the people, but your justification is that you're it's like it's like if I took a spaceship to Mars with like a bunch of people. And then when we landed on Mars, I pulled out an AK and gunned them all down and said, "You can't convict me of crimes. I'm on Mars. It doesn't matter. You're not real." Like, you see what I mean? That's why they want to live here forever. Exactly. I get it. That's why Chikara was researching immortality. In theory, using Purge, even immortality is achievable. Yeah, well, good luck with that now, idiot. You've been cut in half. The ultimate dream that humanity has been yearning for for thousands of years. It will soon become a reality. What do you think they did with his organs and his guts? I hope Terror took his brain and kept it in like a jar. I want to see a really large brain at some point. <laughs> what do you think? Isn't that wonderful? About Chikara's research on immortality. I am aware that Chikara was very particular about immortality. However, I will say one thing. One must not believe in eternal youth. Eternal youth is a lie. God, I... <laughs> stop this! By the way, Mr. Ryuki, do you remember what you said earlier? Simulation theory is nothing but occult nonsense. Uh, yeah, I, I do believe that. It is occult nonsense. That is clearly false. Okay, prove it to me. The simulation theory is not occult. It falls within the realm of science. In fact, Many esteemed scientists have given serious thought to the matter. Shut. <laughs> Many esteemed scientists have given serious thought to all kinds of bullshit. That doesn't mean that your your nonsensical theory because you put it in the groundworks of a scientific method means it's actually scientific, okay? I'll give you it's not a cult, all right? Sure, but it's still batshit insane, like. The theory was originally proposed by a Swedish philosopher. However, the concept has been around since long ago, even as far back as the days of Plato and Zwang Se. Okay, so cool. So some people way back when also thought of this idea. You know what? Way, way back in the fucking day, they thought that they could cure illnesses by sticking leeches on you and sucking out the bad blood. Like just because some old ancient dude we also thought it doesn't mean it's right, okay? Like, they used to think that frogs just spawned from mud because it would rain and then people would see frogs come out of the mud and they were like, ah, whenever it rains, frogs come out of the mud. That means frogs come from mud. Like, you see what I mean? Like, people, people, I, won't, I don't necessarily agree with this, like, assumption. I see a lot where people are like, man, back in, like, the olden days and the ancient times, people were stupid. No, they weren't stupid. You know, I think intellectually speaking, they were on similar levels as us, but like, 
they just didn't have methods to test things they didn't have you know all these like all these fucking you know lifetimes of research stacked on each other this world may be an illusion at least there is no way to prove it isn't an illusion there are great people throughout history who have held such ideas okay and my question to you is does it fucking matter how are you gonna break it how are you gonna do that can you can you have any concrete proof that what you're doing is doing anything like does it matter if the world is an illusion or not but there's no way to prove it is an illusion either is there no there is plenty of science to support it. what the holographic principle theory of relativity the measurement problem in quantum theory can also be considered proof what <laughs> no you're taking things that haven't been solved yet and saying they're proof no hold on you're taking theories that have issues that people are trying to currently work and experiment upon and saying, oh, well, there's no answer yet. So clearly this is proof because it wouldn't make sense. No, that's not how this works. This lady's insane. Get me out of here. Fuck this place, dude. Oh, my Lord. Oh, can I look at everything again? Okay, well, I mean, like, yeah, all right. Um, sure. The processing speed problem? Say this world really is a simulation. Then that would mean a computer or something that's running the simulation exists somewhere, right? But it doesn't seem realistic that everything that happens in the universe could be derived by calculation. Yes, you are right. However, there is no need to calculate every phenomenon. Only what observers see and experience. Take the measurement problem in quantum theory. It explains the inexplicable phenomenon observed in the double slit experiment. Quantum matter appears as particles when observed, and as waves when not observed. For the latter, its position cannot be specified because it exists as a stochastic wave. Therefore, it must be calculated and processed as the entire wave, and is impossible to reduce. The faster an object moves, or as the effects of gravity increase along with the increase in mass, Time progresses slower, as I'm sure you know. And that's related to processing speed? Yes. When the load during calculation is increased, <laughs> a phenomenon <laughs> akin to a processing failure occurs. Bro, this is... How can you say that sentence and be like, yeah, this makes sense? This, this is surely it. It sounds so fucking stupid. Oh my god. Ah, the time relativity relativity occurs because the computer that we're being processed in, you know, as we expand the as we make number bigger, it slow down. Like, <laughs> so fucking dumb. That's such a like child viewpoint of things. Oh my lord. That is why nothing can exceed the speed of light. The calculation wouldn't be able to catch up if acceleration is infinite. Oh, whoops. Let me explain the double slit experiment. We shoot a ray of light toward a board with two slits and a screen behind it. This causes the rays to be distorted to look like stripes. This is because the light has the property of a wave. Then, what would happen if we shot light molecules one at a time? The light molecules will show up as a dot on the screen. By continuously doing this, the stripes reappear. Why is this? The light molecules are only being shot one by one, so the board shouldn't have an effect. The next part of, the ex of this experiment was done using a detection device to see which slit the molecule went through. This caused the stripes to disappear and only two lines appeared on the screen. Isn't that interesting? When it's not being observed, they appear as waves. But as soon as you try to observe it, they appear as lines. This is the gist of the detection problem in molecular theory. This is a bit too complicated for me. Eh, hold on, the Swedish philosophers claim. I'd like to ask you one thing. Beings that are far more intelligent and advanced than we humans. Do you believe a civilization of such beings exists anywhere in this world? In this, what do you mean this world? Is this world planet Earth? Because if so, no. Is this world the entirety of all creation? Yes, I think that there is a pretty high chance that, that at least somewhere in the absolutely infinite expanse of the universe i believe there are other planets that have surely fallen within ranges that could sustain life and you know like if you extrapolate enough dots 
eventually you'll get there, right? Like, you gotta think of just how fucking vast the universe is. I think the probability of that is pretty, pretty darn good. And by this world, I mean all possible worlds in the entire universe, including those outside of our own. Yes, I think it is in... I think it is not only possible, likely. Is necessarily, are they more advanced than us? Who could say? Like, you know, who knows how another entire ecosystem of life that develops on an entirely different planet is going to behave, right? Like, it's going to develop completely differently. Who knows? But I think there's a pretty, pretty damn high chance that at least somewhere in the universe there are living things. Well, somewhere out there, probably. Yeah. I agree. Taking that into consideration, we're left with three possibilities. One, civilization hasn't reached a level of technology advanced enough to create a simulation that can't be distinguished from reality. Okay. Two, civilization has reached a level of technology advanced enough to accomplish this, but it hasn't for some reason. Three, civilization has reached that level of technology and has no strong reason not to use it. Therefore, they've proceeded with creating an intricate simulation. Which of these do you think is most likely? Are you saying it's three? That is what a famous Swedish philosopher believed, at least. He further explains, that civilization must have run simulations millions or even trillions of times. In which case, it would make sense to believe our world would be included in one of those simulations. You're saying it's far more likely that we're one of the countless simulated worlds, rather than a world that exists in the one and only reality. Do I have that right? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, whoops. Additionally, the simulation in the real world may be a simulation at- Oh, hold on. I gotta- I gotta actually- I can't just skim this and uh, get it. I gotta actually, like, focus on this shit. Additionally, the simulation in the real world may be a simulation itself. Kind of like a Matryoshka doll. Just so you know, I'm not saying I believe the simulation theory. The simulation theory isn't too credible because of this Matryoshka doll aspect. Yeah, fair. I'm getting sleepy. The holographic principle? Even light cannot escape a black hole. I'm sure you've heard this before. Information is the same. It cannot escape a black hole. It's known that the amount of information trapped in this way is not derived from the volume of the black hole, but the surface area. Considering this, you can conclude that information in a three-dimensional space is stored in the boundary of its two-dimensional surface. In other words, all information stored in this universe is encoded in a single flat plane, just like a hologram. Regarding gravity and other physical processes, they can be completely accounted for through the laws of physics defined by the boundary surface. Let's take a character from an action game, for example. When that character falls, you may think he was pulled to the ground by gravity. Bro, what is, what is this? <laughs> However, gravity does not actually exist in the game world. Only code that was written in the program. The character's body is merely made to show as if it fell based on its code. You think this world is the same? The holographic principle is not a theory. It is a principle. It has already been mathematically proven. It's a, it's a nice watch. I see. Then let us leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I wanna I wanna disengage from this. In any case. There is no denying that the simulation theory um, is true. I don't know about that one, Chief, but sure. I mean, I'm clearly not going to convince you. But unlike Chikara, I have no interest in the concept of immortality. Because my objective is to tear at the seams of this world and emancipate us all. So you mean dying? No. Death and emancipation are completely different. I have no desire to commit suicide. Show me the mathematical proof that if you destroy this world, we will somehow be free from it and go into a real world. Okay. I like this idea where you're like, hey, we live in a simulation because, you know, a, a very advanced is, is civilization could uh, could make a sim could an advanced civilization could make a simulation. I'm getting my words mixed up here that simulates a universe. 
Okay, right. Follow that. I get it. Makes sense. Um, so in theory, if we're in a simulation, if we destroy the simulation, we'll pop out of it into the real world. Like, wait, you see what I mean? Like, are you seeing the disconnect here? Wait a minute. Like, <laughs> it's like if Mario became sentient and he was like, oh, mamma mia, I'm getting the fuck out of here, dude. And he just tore down his universe, being the Mario universe. I don't think that means Mario's gonna be walking around on Earth being like, what's up? I don't think that's how that works. He's probably gonna go down with his universe. Though I would be fine with dying at any time. <laughs> okay, pulls out gun. <laughs> Saves me a lot of trouble. Because this world isn't real. There is that, yes. However, there is another reason. If I wish to do so, I can resurrect myself. Uh, oh, what? We are living in a false world created by a program. Therefore, if we can rewrite its code, we can create miracles like reincarnation. Oh, God. Or even bringing someone who has already passed back to life. You got any proof for this, or, uh... Okay. Has this woman lost it? You're just now thinking she's lost it? Bruh. <laughs> Ryuki, you were right. There's clearly a lot of reasons to be suspicious of Tokiko. Yeah. Let's check with Wingsink. Can I start with him? No, fuck. All right, well, do a little wink sink action. I'm so sad I missed the other opportunities. I saw everything. If you don't do as I say, I'm sure you know where this is going. What? What is this? Looks like Tokiko is blackmailing someone. What is it she saw? I don't know. This is as far as we can get through Wink Sink. Then... Yes, let's get a deeper look into her mind. Using a regular sink. Oh, <laughs> You're coming with me. Why? Because I said so. I have to dive into your brain. Like, the fact that we can just do this is ridiculous. I don't want to go Ryuki, in her brain. Just to confirm, you did get permission, right? I, like, I really don't want to sync with her. This she's fucking insane, dude. I don't know what I'm gonna see. I'm scared. Yes, she accompanied me voluntarily, and no, I met from Boss. I haven't seen Boss. She wasn't in the control. Oh room. no, here we go again. It's fine. I'll be sure to talk to her later. Hmm. I don't think this is a good idea. Besides, you don't look so good, Ryuki. I'm fine. So please, I need more leads to solve this case. But you... Oh, fine. I'll help you for now, but I won't be held responsible. Deal? Thanks, Pewter. You're a darling. <sighs> Love you. Look, Ryuki, please just don't cause any problems. Bro, he's not even resting his head on the headrest. Wait a minute. Okay, like he's getting like the back of it here, but he's got no neck support, dude. You can only stay insomnium for six minutes. I absolutely need you to follow this rule. I'll consider it. Yes, understood. Okay, then. Let's begin. But what if I swapped bodies with Tokiko? <laughs> That'd be kind of wacky, wouldn't it? That would only further prove in her mind that the world's a simulation. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no fucking doubt. All right, what fucked up shit am I gonna see? Okay. Okay, this isn't as bad as I thought. This is a little creepy, but not horrific. I wonder if this is the Nye's president's room. 
It's really white, though. You can't just say that, Tama. Jesus. Let's make an acronym poem with the letters for nice. Oh, okay. We're going. Where the hell is this coming from? Who cares? Play along. N. Okay. Okay. N. N. Not that I know why. A. 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 Angry. I. 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 Incoming? Uh-huh, okay, yep, we're doing great. X! <laughs> Good luck with X, my dude. Shingu River Ray. Mm-hmm, yeah. Not that I know why. Angry incoming Shingu River Ray. The Shingu River Ray. Such a kind animal. <laughs> <laughs> Angered by humans polluting waterways, I guess. It checks out. <laughs> Anywho. Man. Activate. Anyway, Somnia scan activate. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh my god. We're a government agency. We're a bunch of fucking clowns. I'm pretty sure this is how real investigation goes. <laughs> real investigations go. Excuse me. Oh my lord. Oh, no, no, Tokiko's there now. Hello. Stare into Tokiko's abyss. It seems like Tokiko is threatening someone by peeking into her mind's abyss. You might discover something. All right, look, before we... Oh, no, hold on. This is such a quiet place. So empty and blank. Maybe that's Tokiko's mental state. Pretty eccentric. Hopefully we can find something here. Looks like we can only interact with that ripped up book. Right. Let's investigate. All right, before we dive into Tokiko's Abyss State, uh, this is where I'm gonna going to end the episode. So, thank you so so much for watching. Um, as always, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the Steam Store page. You can pick up the game for yourself. Check it out. Uh, have a have a good time. Yeah, you know you know the drill by now. Look, I say it every time. So uh, yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for being here with me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day or your night or whatever time it is for you. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye.